Yeah, I'm like some weird uh, uh, anomaly, I think, in that I consciously decided to become an astronaut when I was nine years old. And it wasn't like I hope or I'm dreaming or, you know, I want to be a fireman and, a, and a whatever. Um, I, I, I saw what was happening and I just said, well, that's the coolest thing that I can possibly imagine. That's what gets my heart beating. And like, if we can make our life do this thing, then let's do that. That's the coolest thing. And what, what planted both the uh, seed of imagination and the certainty that that's what I wanted to do was a combination between fiction and nonfiction. The fictional side was, uh, probably started with comic books, you know, Marvel, because because everything's just so gloriously expanded and exciting and everybody's muscular and, and there's big stories happening. But that's OK. That's the world of a little kid. And then and then getting into more subtle investigations of it with writers like Bradbury or or, you know, who are really use the language excellently, but then uh, explore ideas and then um to have it happen for real on top of the fiction. That's what really cemented it for me. You know, here I am a little kid reading this early science fiction and then seeing that um, that people are doing this for real while I'm watching these pretend things of Kirk and Uhura, you know, exploring a five-year mission, uh, strange new worlds, uh, Gagarin flies, and then uh, Al Shepard flies, and then the whole Gemini program, and then of course the real watershed moment when um, Mike and Neil and Buzz went to the moon, and Neil and Buzz walked on the surface, and that that mixture set me up, and then knocked it out of the park. the The science fiction set it up, and then the reality of people actually doing it. That's what convinced me that hey, maybe if they can do it, then why can't I do it? They're just people. 